Magnus Volk was an interesting fellow. Born in Brighton, England, 1851, he experimented with electricity and built one of the world's first electric cars. He also happens to be the great-grandfather of Joe Volk, a musician specialising in acoustic and folk music. Oh yeah, and he built two weird railways. Magnus Volk's first railway was constructed in 1883. The two-foot gauge railway only followed about a quarter of a mile along the coast of Brighton. In 1884, it was extended a further half mile and re-gauged to two foot 8.5 inches. What made this railway stand out, aside from simply being a tourist attraction, was the fact that it was electric. A Ukrainian inventor, Fyodor Pyotsky, had already built the world's first public electric tramway by 1888, so Volk wasn't the first to come up with the idea, but electric railways were a very new technology and practically unheard of in Britain, and so it got a lot of people's attention very quickly. The original design simply powered the carriages via the rails, the same way a model train set works, but a third rail was later added to improve efficiency. As outstanding as tourists were, some locals were afraid of the railway as the carriages seemed to move on their own without making any noise. Some believed that the carriages were moved by forces beyond our understanding, and were as such the work of the devil. As time went by though, people soon came to realise that the railway was safe and not actually the work of Satan. Volk, however, wasn't content with the length of his railway and wanted to extend it further. Unfortunately, the surrounding terrain was unfit to build a railway on, and so the line couldn't be extended. He then realised that the nearby beach was relatively level, and simply decided to build a railway on top of the surf along the shore. The rails consisted of two sets of 2 foot 8.5 inch gauge track being laid parallel with each other, with the outermost rails being about 18 feet apart, making it possibly one of the widest railways in the world. The rails were set on concrete sleepers with deep foundations to ensure they wouldn't be affected by the tide. Power was fed through an overhead power line set up beside the track in order to power the... I hesitate to use the word locomotive. Carriage? Stilty thing? This. It was named Pioneer, but was mainly nicknamed Daddy Longlegs due to its design. The car's weight and height allowed it to traverse the rails whether the tide was in or out, and the fact it was powered by electricity meant there was more space for passengers since there wasn't a great big engine in the way. Because of regulations, Pioneer was also equipped with lifeboat, numerous ship safety features, a qualified ship's captain at all times, and those big round floaty things. This railway unfortunately was short-lived, opening in 1896 and closing in 1901. Shortly after it was opened, a storm knocked Pioneer onto its side and left the railway closed until July of 1897. In 1900, several groins were built along the shore, leading to the ground under the rail foundations to become unstable. By the time Volk had amended this, the council were looking into building a beach protection barrier, which would require Volk to divert his railway around it. Volk lacked the funds to do so and ended up just closing the railway. By 1901, the railway was pulled up to make way for the barrier. If you visit the beach, you can still see some of the foundations still in place. After it was closed, Volk decided to extend his original railway to cover a portion of the other railway's original route. In following years, the original line was shortened to make way for development and other such things, but still remains operational to this day, simply living as a tourist attraction that provides a scenic view of the beach. The line usually runs during the summer and remains closed over the winter, with exceptions occasionally made, such as when the Athena B got beached close to the railway in the winter of 1980, where locals and tourists get gathered to witness the mishap as they do. While both railways served as mere tourist attractions, they did help prove that electric railways were at least a viable alternative to steam power. It must have worked, because most of the southern railways in England were converted to run on electricity during the early 1900s. So, if there's anyone you want to thank for electric railways in England, you can start with Magnus Volk. Just don't expect to be going to work on the 810 moving pier anytime soon. Subscribe for more.